Yeah, from the Useless Crafter. All right, I am giving you so much time this time. Um, I am doing Christmas tic-tac-toe bags. Um, but you can do this uh, for any season, occasion. Um, we can even change this up to do Halloween, although that doesn't give you a lot of time. But I'm going to show you where to buy things and also how to make it. So, and some tips along the way. Um, last year I did this, or actually maybe two years ago, I did this for my daughter's class. I did it for Valentine's Day. And so I did, it was this with the red, and then on the other side it said tic-tac-toe, of course. So this side is almost always gonna be the same. You're gonna have the little um, grid, and then tic-tac-toe, I like to write it out, and then you can just change it up, right? Like, it doesn't need to be a snowflake, I was just being extra. So I'm gonna show you how to do all of that. Now, the, um, I did do this penguin, so I'm gonna get really close so that you can see it. So, do you see the name Charlotte? What I did was, that's white glitter um, HTV, and then a blue glitter HTV on top. Now I know that you've probably read that you shouldn't be layering glitter on glitter, but keep in mind that these bags are not gonna go through the same wear and tear as your clothes because we're not, you really shouldn't have to wash these bags. So these bags, as long as you activate the heat component um, and it gets sticky, it will stick. So if you can see how I'm doing this, nothing is coming off of this thing. And I also decided to do the penguin is um, printable HT, um, yeah, printable HTV for dark colors. I always, I only buy the dark colors because I've heard that it's more vibrant. So I always went with it. And most of the time I would say I'm putting it on a white shirt. So, and they look pretty, pretty darn good. So I would say it's safe to use that dark, uh, for dark prints. And, uh, that's on my Amazon shop. So it's amazon.com slash shop slash the useless crafter. And I want to say it's probably, I do it by categories. <sighs> that one would probably be, I don't know if I did it under, I'll, I'll let you know <laughs> in the comments. I don't remember which category, but it's probably going to be pretty obvious. Okay. So this is the back side. This is the front side. And I've noticed that people like to decorate the little um, the little X's and O's. I'm gonna say no. What I do is I buy this from the Dollar Tree. It's by the vases. It's where you you know these are what do they call them? Um, glass gems. You usually find them you know in vases or you know something like that. Um, I always buy it. There's usually multiple colors. This one actually came in with just red and white. They're circles. Um, but during Valentine's Day, you can get red heart-shaped ones. So for a dollar, you get, I don't know, I don't remember how much was in there, but I usually buy like two bags and then I'm good to go. So I would do the glass, the clear one, and then the red one for Christmas or blue and white. You know, I kind of thought the blue and white was cute because it just reminds me of like um, the Frozen theme with the blue snowflakes. <clears throat> so it's not so like red and white if, if you wanted to do something different. And I think even though this one is blue and white the between the snowflake and the penguin and the white glitter HTV, it does look like um, snowflakes. It just makes me think of winter time. So I think it's super cute to be a little bit different too. All right, so let me show you how to do it. First thing is I always like to recreate my bag or my shirt or whatever it is that I'm putting it on, right? So this bag is four by six. I got it on eBay. It is so cheap on eBay. I can't remember how much it is, but I remember thinking that it was the cheapest on eBay as opposed to Amazon, Dollar Tree, Oriental Trading, um, any of that, eBay, look. Okay, um, so it's four by six. This top part is one by six. So obviously we're not gonna put anything in this top drawstring area. I would stay clear of this line right here. So you wanna make sure that, like you see my penguin, he's way down from this top line because I don't want it to get crinkled at all. Because when you pull in the drawstring, I don't know if you can see, but my penguin is in the clear. He that He's not being affected at all by the drawstring as well as my grid, okay. 
So I want you to put that on. And then I love this layering of the name. It makes it look super, super cute. So I'll show you an Inkscape. Let's create this little grid. You could download it. I went to Creative Fabrica because I thought um, maybe they would have like the words tic-tac-toe and something cutesy, but they don't. They just have the grid. So I can recreate the grid. I don't want you buying it for a dollar or however much it is. All you do is go into shapes go to get a square. Okay, so I'm gonna put the square right here just so we get an idea of how big things are, right? I'm gonna unlock it because I wanna make it skinny. And once you get to about here, that gives you kind of an idea of how big this is. So it's 0.11 by 3.13. I kind of like to make it even numbers. I don't know why. Because <laughs> I feel like if I need to recreate something, I can actually do it. Um, like for instance, if after you welded this, let's say a tip came off right here, you want to recreate it. It's easier when you have whole numbers or even not in this case, it's not gonna be whole numbers, but um, something easier than 0 0.1111, maybe 0 0.15. Um, and three inches, that looks about good. Let's see. Okay, yeah, that's about right. So let's duplicate it. This is gonna be the other grid mark, right? What you wanna do is you wanna grab the two, align, and align bottom so that we know they are completely parallel top to bottom, okay? And I would group it, assuming that you like this spacing, okay? So I'm gonna group it. I'm gonna duplicate it. And then this time I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees. And I already know they're parallel to each other because we did that already up here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab these two because they're grouped together and they're already parallel. All I need to do now is center it. When I center it, it's gonna give me the perfect tic-tac-toe tic -tac grid. All right, you like that? You're gonna weld it. Now, some people, in order to save on your HTV, they don't weld it because all they do is then they have four lines so that you can, I mean, obviously four lines straight like this, you could make so many on your on your sheet, right? And it would save you a lot of HTV. But I am here to tell you, if you are gonna mass produce this in any way, meaning like you're gonna make 10, 10 is not mass producing, it's kind of small, right? But if you're gonna make 10 or more of these, the pennies that you would save on the HTV is not worth your sanity or the time. I promise you, if you buy your HTV in bulk um, and on sale, like you know, when there's big sales, please don't make it hard for yourself because it, I'm gonna show you real quick, okay? So um, let's save this, save as, um, demo recording just so that I can keep track of it. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna show you something really quick. I'm gonna delete all this, because we can go back and get it. Um, okay, I'm gonna delete it. Oops, I'm gonna delete everything, hold on. Except for my grid mark, okay? So let's go to make it so I can show you. Let's say you're gonna do 20 of these, okay? So you hit 20 there for project copies, apply, and it's gonna just put it up for you, okay? So you see how this is kinda, you feel like it's kind of wasteful because it's here. Like, should I do something like this and really maximize it? No, you know why? <laughs> because in order to get each one of these, you then, after you cut this, after you take it off the mat, okay, just imagine, you're gonna now take a pair of scissors and you have to cut around this so that you can iron on this guy. I mean, seriously, you're gonna cut all of that don't make that mistake. I've done it and I've regretted it. It's not worth save, you know, getting one more extra grid mark up here. Like, no, the time it takes for you to now cut in between these to get your 20 grid, you know, your tic-tac-toe grid marks out, honestly, please learn from my mistake. <laughs> you will want to slap yourself silly, okay? So let's not do that. Let's cancel out of this. 
and let's go I'm gonna go back to my projects and bring it back in and we're gonna recreate everything okay here it is let's customize okay now for the tic-tac-toe you know I do recommend some easy font that's gonna be easy to cut and easy to weed because you are limited in space so like this tic-tac-toe let's just look at it really quickly it's not even three quarters of an inch so you don't want something super thin because then now when you're weeding instead of just pulling off the whole sheet you're gonna have to slowly go around each letter to not lose like the little dot on the eye um or just some you know like silly thing now this font for charlotte is hannah berry koo from creative fabrica which i will link if you don't have it but i use it for so many projects i can't even tell you how easy it was to weed this charlotte and this charlotte is not that big it's an inch um in height but if you could see it the little t literally i pulled it off and then quickly i didn't even need a weeding tool i bent it at the a pulled out the little parts of the a with my fingers um fingernails I got the O out and the E it was super easy I love this font for that reason so it still looks whimsical and delicate but it's not delicate like even this um, the curl of the T's right here it's not as thin as you think so it's a lot easier to a lot easier to weed and cut um, I also really like using glitter HTV for this because it's just sturdy all right so enough of that um, all right so Let's recreate one of these. So I'm going to duplicate. Oh, so I guess I should just show you how to do it in case you don't know how to make your bag. So the bag is just a visual cue for you so that you can see how everything fits. We are going to delete that because you don't need to cut the bag. You already have the bag here, right? So to make the bag, it's a square. And you just want to measure it on your, you know, on your mat beforehand. I'm going to unlock it because I need to change it from a square to a rectangle. And I'm going to make it four by six. And, oh, like, why is it not doing it? Okay. And I also usually like to make it a lighter color so that I just so that I can see it better. So I'm going to make it this color. Then you're going to duplicate that square or that rectangle again unlock it and change it from four by six to four by one to capture the drawstring area okay and there's my drawstring right up here so that I know that really this area right here is what I have to work with both for my grid and the words and everything so um, let's grab these two things and arrange send to the back because it's going to be our most back layer. Everything's going to sit on top of it, right? So here's my grid. It looks good. If you want to change it, so this is basically three by three. Let's see how big I actually made it. So I actually made it smaller, 2.8 by 2.8. So, um, all right. Tic-tac-toe. What font was that? It was Mama and Papa, and it was on... Oh, Mama, Papa. It was on um, fontbundles.com, fontbundles.net, sorry. Okay, so tic-tac-toe. Okay, so clearly I did it in all caps, so let me redo that. I just did it and I forgot. <sighs> tic-tac-toe, okay. So here are the words, and then I wanted to change this, right? You could probably also change the eye from the, the eye to maybe a candy cane, um, but I feel like the snowflake is the most easiest one that still keeps it. This is for my daughter's kindergarten class. I don't want to mess them up with them learning how to read in the first place and then <laughs> making that candy cane into an eye. But the O, the O, I feel is I feel solid about that. So let's go into images. And you're going to type in snowflake. And I'm looking for a snowflake that is less round, but a little bit more flat because it goes more with the font. Like I feel like this is skinnier than it is round, right? So that one would be a good one. Don't pick something like this where it's so delicate because remember we're, we're shrinking it down to like this much. 
you want to save yourself you don't want something too thin where you rip like this kind of maybe looks easy to you but it's so thin that it might not cut through and so when you rip it off the whole thing could come off or a branch can come off right um, I also don't want something like this because then you're weeding the little parts in here, right? Like you want this is a good one and this is a good one. Um, and because it's going to be so small, no one's going to notice it. Um, this one, not bad too. It looks like there's no thin pieces, like even the ends are kind of like thick. Um, this one would be good, but maybe contour out that middle unless you don't mind weeding out that one small part but again it's okay when you're doing like three you think oh no big deal but when you're doing 10 or if you're doing these for orders uh, every step counts um trust me i just did 125 gift tags and i thought i was gonna be good about saving some htv and all that stuff oh my god i created so much work for myself so don't do that um, this is a really simple one as well. It, you're really you're just going to pull off the HTV when you're weeding and it's going to be done. Um, okay, so this is the one that I went with though, just in case you were wondering. Okay. And I never resize anything first. I just make it. I make it and then I resize at the end. Okay, so I want you to be able to see it. I want to be able to see it. So let's ungroup this thing. And we're gonna move the O. We're gonna replace it with this snowflake. So I'm gonna make this smaller. And let's see how small we need to make it. So I don't care that like, oh my gosh, this is one inch. No, as long as my snowflake is relative to my tic-tac-toe, then I'm good. I'm gonna resize everything later. Okay. So here it is. That doesn't look too bad. But what you could do too is you can make it thinner um, or more slender, click the unlock button and do something like this, you know, so that could fit in a little bit better, but it still looks like a snowflake. It still looks really good. I did do that the first time around. All right, the other thing that I did was I wanted to give myself just a little bit more space, so I moved the tick over a little bit. I'm gonna move the toe over just a little bit. And if I have a little bit more room, maybe, maybe even that much. Now, if this was um, Valentine's Day, I would put a small little heart here and a small little heart here so it's clear that it's tic-tac-toe. Um, I just think the snowflake, it, it's going to be more work than it's worth to make it that small. All right, so tic-tac-toe looks good. I'm going to weld it. I want it to stay together. I mean, technically, you could just uh, attach it, but I'm just going to weld it. I, I, I use weld a lot. Um, okay, so it's gonna go here. We need to make it skinnier. The other thing that I like about using um, a print as opposed to cursive right here is we are limited in size, right? But this one, if I really wanted to, I can unlock it and make it longer and it still reads tic-tac-toe well, right? Like that font still looks good even though I stretched it out this way and not make it proportionate both, both in height and width. So you could do something like that. So that's the front side. The back side, this is just print and cut. And I absolutely, it's so stinking cute. You can take any image and make it a print and cut. This one, I did download it from Creative Fabrica. So you can go there and look at penguins. Or you could just go to images in design space and um, do a penguin. I didn't see one that I liked. It wasn't as cutesy. Um, I was looking for something really fun and cute. So I, I mean, this guy's not, not bad. So he, that kind of reminds me of a peppermint patty. So let's bring that one in. And see, he just doesn't look as cute, but that's okay. <laughs> All right, so he is in layers, right? It's great when they're in layers because that means we can change the colors. So for instance, this one, I want it red because I don't want any blue. I want this to be like a real peppermint um, candy. And I want the white pieces to look very white. I don't like that creamish gray color, whatever. 
So I'm gonna make it really white, as well as his everything that goes with him. And maybe this too. I don't like him that dull. I want him like bright white and cute. Okay. So you could do something like this. You could even like put a heart here. There's so many things that you could do. Um, and then you can flatten it and it will become a print then cut image. I'm gonna get rid of that O from tic-tac-toe. Um, let's say you wanted to write, um, I don't know, if this was a Christmas gift for my daughter. So love Charlotte. Um, we can make it in, oops. Let's change this to, where did it go? Okay. Um, let's change it to, let's ungroup it. I'm gonna change it into two different colors. I'm gonna do love in one color. We will do love in green, maybe. And I'll do Charlotte in, oops. Um, maybe she wants it pink, who knows. But you can do this. You can re-space it too, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna put it in there just so that you can see what I'm, things that you can do, okay? Okay, let's say we like that. And let's say you want the hat to be some other color. You can, again, go and change any of these colors um, to whatever you want. But you have everything, so grab it and flattened and it becomes one image. If you remember, it was a bunch of different, um, each color was different, right? So here, now he's printed. So let's duplicate this so we can see what our front side looks like. Duplicate. Just send to the front. So here's our little penguin, and then we're just gonna do the name. So the name, I would do it in Inkscape. So let's do it here. I'm just, let's do a new one. File, new. Okay, here it is. Okay, so on this one, let's do a text box, because we wanna do the name, and we want an offset, right? So. And I'm gonna go get my Hanaberry Koo, my, one of my favorite fonts right now. I use it almost in every project. Okay, here it is. Okay, so I'm gonna type out Charlotte. Oops, it's still in Happy Popcorn. What happened? Okay. Hmm, hold on. It is not letting me change. Okay, it's stuck in Happy Popcorn for whatever reason. Let me click on the arrow because it's the same way to do the offset. So I'm just gonna show you how to do the offset. So we've clicked on this. What you wanna make sure is it's locked so that we can make it bigger so everyone can see better. Okay, so here is Charlotte. What you wanna do is this is currently selected, right? So get your arrow, click in an empty white space so that nothing's selected. Click on the paint bucket. Then click on, hold on, let me make this bigger. Okay, pick on any color because we can change it in design space. And then you want to click on the name. So O-T-T-E, <coughs> excuse me, was all connected, so I only needed to click on it once, right? Click on your arrow. You want to grab everything, the whole name Charlotte right over here. Path, object to path, file, save as, and you wanna remember how you save this, okay? So I'm gonna type happy popcorn Charlotte. All right, so now in design space, we're gonna to go to upload. 
upload image, browse, go find your offset. And mine was Happy Popcorn Charlotte. I know I need to clean this out. Um, Happy Popcorn, here it is. So I double clicked on it, just click continue, hit save. Here's our file, so click on it and insert. And it's gonna bring it in. Okay, so what you wanna do is you wanna ungroup this. And then remember how we had to click on the C and the H separately and then the OTTE came in together? So all the pinks, you're gonna grab it. So you're gonna select the first one, hit the shift key, grab the second one, the third one, and the fourth one. Once you do that, you're gonna weld it because we want it to be one full piece that's an offset, okay? So here is that. Now when we're looking at this, let's click on contour because I don't like those little dots. I feel like they're just gonna mess up my project and not give me anything for it, right? Does it really matter that that little dot is there? I'm gonna say no. So <laughs> go to contour and you can one, easily click hide all and it would give you like a very full offset. If you like this look, well, you'll see in a second. So let's grab Charlotte and let's weld that because we want that to be all connected and fluid. It's gonna look like this. So do you need the space in the middle? That is that is personal preference. What you didn't need was that little space of the H. I don't even remember where that little dot was. And there was another little dot right here for the R. Um, I feel like that's where things get messed up. It gets ripped. It, it's just not worth the hassle. So I would definitely get rid of the smaller ones. It's gonna be up to you whether you like this, this part open, the O and the E. All right, but let's change the colors to something that um, I actually, that would work with what, what I had just done. So that's white, and then the Charlotte is blue. Okay, and then these two, I'm gonna grab the two and I'm going to align and center it and then group it because I want it to travel together as one piece. It's not gonna cut as one piece. And that, that would be if you attached it. But this one is just, it's moving together as one. It's gonna be resized as one, which is what we want because we need to make, make it fit here, right? Um, obviously, Charlotte's not gonna give herself a bag, although <laughs> Maybe my daughter would give herself a bag, um, but the name of the of the child would be here. Um, if you wanted to put love, you know, if this was a birthday, maybe I don't know if I want my name on it forever for someone else, but that's up to you. All right, that's it. You can make this for any theme. You can um, go get different color, you know, beads. Um, I would not put the X and O on these. I feel like the fact that they're different colors is worth it. I would rather personalize the bags than I would personalize these things. First of all, for tic-tac-toe, I'm gonna assume that these are for younger kids. Um, have you seen the way they eat and what's on their fingers? There's paint, there's grease. Um, you're gonna have a hard time with the vinyl staying on. So, and it's tiny. You would have to do at least 10, right? Five of each, or I'm sorry. Yeah, five of each color um, because you have nine spots if it's full, right? So you need five of each. So you're gonna do 10 of them and to personalize them, I mean, it is very, very cute, don't get me wrong, but I don't know if it's worth the effort. Um, and if you're gonna add in your time as a cost, um, I just think it's, it's, it's not worth the effort and you're gonna raise the prices on that which when they peel off people are gonna be unhappy as well um, okay so we are all done so when you are done and you want to go to the make it screen what you want to do is you need to get rid of these bags because we don't need the bags the bags you would have already bought right <laughs> so we don't need the bags at all so let me grab the bags and just delete Okay, so we're gonna go to make it. Here's your print and cut. These are the two items, it's so cute. You can change your project up here. Let's say you're gonna make 10. So I'm gonna type 10 and apply.
And I love this printable iron-on. I'm gonna show you what it looks like. Mine, I only did the two, so I still have this. I'm hoping to reuse this another time, but you literally just peel it off, put it on your bag, and then heat it up. It's so easy to work with. Okay, so here it is. Unfortunately, this guy is hanging out by himself, but this looks pretty good. Um, okay, so here's our Charlotte and our tic-tac-toe. Oh, we don't want this. The tic-tac-toe, you don't want to apply each one of these letters, right? No way. So we need to fix that. Here's our grid. Again, the grid is the grid. Don't go crazy and like start mixing them up because what you can do now is when you go to um, weed this, you could, and look, this is wasted space right here. If you want to make it easy on yourself, if you know you're not going to reuse your, your uh, vinyl, if you're not like a saver, I would do something like this because then you can take your paper cutter or your scissors and just cut and then right across and then you've got your nine out there. Um, actually, you can probably fit this one in. So click on this, click on the three dots, move object. Now I'm gonna eat my words for a second because if you were only doing 10, I would, I would move that grid over because I don't wanna cut on another piece of vinyl. So here it is, it dropped right in there. I would probably do something like this. I know. But this is still an easy, clean cut. I would do this so I can cut one straight row down right here and right here. I just need to cut around this one. But then you save vinyl. Okay. Oh, same thing with this. We need to attach these. You don't want to be doing each one of these. So it's always good to look at what you have because then you can see where you made the mistake. See, this is, I like this because I'm going to cut down here. I'm gonna cut across and tic-tac-toe is gonna be ready to just put down on my bag and iron on. I'm not piecing out each one of these things. So let's cancel for a second. And I would, these I would attach. And once you get your name, like let's say you are doing 20 of these, I would attach it and then I would just move the name on the inside so that, um, you know, if you were doing multiple names, I'll show you in a second once we're, once we're there. So that's done. This one, let me weld that. Let's see, this one, do I need to weld this? I'm gonna weld that. You can weld or attach, it really doesn't matter. Um, I think this one was already welded. Yeah, okay, so now let's go to the Make It screen. Let's do nine. And the reason why I say nine is your print and cut is gonna be on two sheets instead of three sheets. Um, you're not gonna have that extra tic-tac-toe grid off on its own. <laughs> okay, but let's look at our white. So here's our white tic-tac-toes all together, which is what we want. You do wanna mirror it if it's gonna be iron on vinyl. Okay, here's our grid. Um, I would space this just a little bit better so that your scissors can cut down really close. I mean, here it's thin, you can't go that super fast, but you can still cut it pretty easily. Okay, here is the red. What I would do is, let's say these are all different names, okay? I would change this to 12 by 24, because then I don't have to move each name over individually. So what will happen is it will group all my red onto a 12 by 24 map. But I'm not even gonna use 12 by 24. I'm just gonna use 12 by 12, but I'm gonna put all my names in here so I'm not wasting vinyl. And in fact, if I put it where I really want to, then I don't even need to worry about it. I'll just cut around the circle, weed it, and then iron it on. So when you do this, um, you can send in a 12 by 12 mat, even though it says 12 by 24, because you don't have anything cutting on the second half of the, of the 12 by 12. But if you really wanted to, if it made you feel nervous, you can now change it to 12 by 12. It doesn't matter. Oh no, but it switched my name, so it does matter. 
you need to keep it as 12 by 24 okay learn something new okay here's my charlotte and my grid um yeah so that's it is what it is and here's my tic-tac-toe all right i can't wait to see yours please let me know your please let me know your thoughts feedback is awesome and then if you have any special requests i'm here all right you can always um post it first and then if you have like a lot of details or files or screenshots that you want to send me send it to ann a n at the all right thanks guys bye